Hey guys, I'm just going to kind of go over the answers and rationale on the worksheet that was, I think, assigned on Friday. Um, so we're supposed to mark each of these as either a chemical change, chemical property, physical change, or physical property. So remember, if it is chemical, we are changing what it is, or it has the ability to literally change the substance itself, what the substance is. In a physical change or a physical property, um, it's either an observation of something without changing what it is, or changing something about it that doesn't change what it is. Okay, so like tearing a piece of paper apart. I've changed the paper, but it's still paper, right? Um, so let's kind of talk about these. So heat conductivity. So if something can conduct heat. All right, so I stick a metal rod in the fire. The heat conducts up to my hand. Has the metal changed what it is? No. And it doesn't even say that it's actively doing it. This would be more like that it could do this. Okay, so I would say this has got to be a physical property. It is a property that it can conduct heat. Okay, um, silver tarnishing, and I even put on there turning black. Okay, in the notes we had... I think five clues that there was a chemical reaction taking place and one of them is a color change. So that black stuff that would form on silver is actually kind of silver's version of rust. Um, so that would be a chemical change. The substance is not silver, it is something that formed from silver and oxygen if you let that silver set out. Um, boiling, okay so I boil something Maybe water is probably the example we're the most familiar with. I boil water, it becomes a gas, it's now in the air, but again, it's still water. So the substance itself is the same, but it has changed. So it's a physical change. Um, cutting steel, so it's definitely a change, right? We've changed the steel, but it's still steel. The substance has not changed its identity, so it's gotta be a physical change. Um, the length of a metal object, that's not changing anything, right? I'm just measuring that thing. So I can, I'm not changing anything, so it's got to be a property. And I'm not changing anything about it, so it's got to be a physical property. Um, butter melting. So if you melt anything, you're changing the way that it looks, changing the way that it behaves, but you're not changing what it is. Okay, so since we're not changing what it is, it is a physical change because it's still butter. Um, exploding dynamite, okay, any kind of an uh, explosion has got to be a chemical change, all right, there's some sort of a reaction going on to increase the volume really, really fast to make an explosion, all right, so combustible, that just means it can burn, so this is when we said this is an ability to do a chemical reaction, so abilities to do chemical reactions are called chemical properties. We're not saying that it's burning now. It's combustible. It could burn. Okay. Um, water freezing. Again, if I freeze, that's just kind of the opposite of melting. We said melting was a physical change. So freezing is also a physical change. We're changing its state of matter, but we're not changing what it is. It's still water. Um, wood burning. Again, anything burning, we're changing it from one substance into another substance. So that's a chemical change. An acid burn, okay, usually anytime you see acid, that's kind of a dead giveaway that it's a chemical because acids are very reactive. Um, brittleness, I maybe should have added a little bit of what brittleness is. Brittleness is how maybe rigid something is, how likely it is to break if I try to bend it instead of bending. But So this would be a measure of how breakable something is, kind of. Um, so if I'm going to break something, I'm not going to change what it is, right? I'm just going to be breaking it into smaller pieces. So that's going to be a physical property this time because this is a ness, right? This isn't saying that I broke something. This is saying how easy would it be to break something. So this is a property of how breakable something is. Um, milk souring. So if you let your milk sour a bunch, don't do this, <laughs> but it's going to produce an odor. That's one of our clues of a chemical change. It might even change color and start to turn yellowish. That's one of our clues of a chemical change. And it might get lumpy, which would be forming a precipitate, 
which is also one of our clues of chemical change. So milk souring has definitely got to be a chemical change. Um, and baking bread. Um, one of our clues of chemical change was production of bubbles. When we bake bread, uh, there's a bubble production that we get the, you know, big bubbles in our fluffy bread. And there's also a color change, right? It goes from light, light tan to more of a golden brown. So color change. Uh, we know baking bread smells good, so there's an odor. That was another one of our clues. So that's got to also be chemical change. All right, and these are just true-false. All right, so it says, a change in size or shape is a physical change. So I could take a big piece of dough, chop it in half. Now I have two small ones. It's not changed what it is, right? Or if I have a piece of Play-Doh and I roll it out into a snake, it's still Play-Doh. I haven't changed what it is. So that's true. It's a physical change. It does not change the substance, what it's made of. It just changes what it looks like. Um, 16, a chemical change means a new substance with new properties was formed. That's pretty much the definition of a chemical change, right? If we're making a new substance, the chemical has been changed. So that's also true. Um, an example of chemical change is when water freezes. So if we have liquid water and we freeze it into solid water, Remember, it's still water. We haven't changed the chemical that we're talking about. It's still water, so that would be false. That would be a physical change. And you didn't have to make that edit. I'm doing that just for our purposes. All right, 18, when platinum is heated, then cooled to its original state, we say this is a physical change. So this is kind of the same idea. We, platinum is a metal. We could heat it up and melt it and cool it and turn it back into a solid again but it would stay platinum it would stay the same substance so that's true um, 19 when milk turns sour this is a physical change because the change in odor does not indicate a chemical change um, well it is it is an indicator um, so change in odor does indicate a chemical change so it must be false um, 20, when citric acid and baking soda mix, carbon dioxide is produced and the temperature decreases. This must be a chemical change, right? So carbon dioxide would be a gas. So this would make bubbles. And the temperature changes. That was also a clue that a chemical reaction had taken place. So this has got to be true. Remember, production of gas is a clue a chemical change has taken place. A temperature change that's not because, you know, we heated it up or we cooled it down. Just become, between these things mixing together, it got cold. So that is one of our clues of a chemical change. All right, backside will not take as long. Um, again, we're just, it's telling us they're all changes. So we can just say physical or chemical. You leave your bicycle out in the rain and it rusts. Okay, rust is not the same color as the metal, right? And the, you know, metals that they're making the bicycle out of are nice and tough. Rust, on the other hand, is brittle and weak. So we have changed the substance. So that must, and it also has a color change, right? Rust is red. So that must be chemical. A sugar cube dissolves. So I put my sugar in the water, it dissolves. Um, the sugar is still sugar, right? Sugar water tastes sweet, just like sugar tastes sweet. So the sugar is still sugar, and the water is still water. So this must be a physical change. 23, scientists break up water, like this, there's water, break it up into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. We have the same atoms, okay, but we have different substances. So the substance we started with was water, and the substances that we're creating are oxygen and hydrogen. So this would be chemical. And burning coal for a barbecue. Anytime we're burning something, that's chemical. We're creating heat. There's a temperature change. We're changing color. Um, you know, coal before you burn it is black. And after you burn it, it's all gray. So there's a color change. Uh, there's a temperature change. All kinds of clues for that one. Um, 25, trimming a bush because it has grown too tall. You cut a piece of wood or a branch off a tree. It's still a branch, right? You haven't changed what it's made of, so it's got to be physical. All right. Um, this one, 4 grams of hydrogen gas react with 32 grams of oxygen to form 
water. What is the mass of the water that forms? So this one is really this simple. Okay, I have these two things reacting together. I'm only making one substance. So I have to have made 36 grams of water because law of conservation of mass says I can't have any more or less stuff to begin or end with. So the amount of stuff I start with has to be the same as the amount of stuff I create. Uh, this one's a little bit tougher. Okay, I have 34 grams of something reacting with 18 grams of something else. And we're going to make 25 grams of something. And this one has two products. Okay, mathematically we can just take that arrow and turn it into an equal sign. So I'm gonna have 34 plus 18 equals 25 plus, I don't know. I like to put my question marks in boxes if I'm gonna do that. So the first thing I would do I would take 34 plus 18, that's 52. Then my unknown is plus 25, so I'm going to subtract 25. And I get 27 grams is what, how many grams of substance D I would have to have. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, we're looking at a test on Friday in here. So you may want to be studying. I'll probably put some review videos up on Classroom. Um, but good luck. No uh, actual, I, mm, I don't think there's an assignment today. You had a quizzes you are supposed to do yesterday if you have not done that yet. All right, see you later.